In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an effective content strategy for any business, whether you're just starting out or looking to improve your existing strategy. A well-planned and executed content strategy can help you to achieve your business goals and engage with your target audience. So if you are ready to take your content marketing to the next level, then keep watching. It's in this year. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to get more customers, make more sales and grow your business using social media platforms and other sales and marketing strategies, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and enable your notifications so you don't miss out on any video I post on this channel. Now, what exactly is content strategy? A content strategy is a roadmap that guides the creation, publication, and distribution of content that aligns with your business goals and resonates with your target audience. It includes decisions about what content to create, how to create it, and also how to distribute it. And that's why in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to create an effective content strategy for any business, whether you're just building your personal brand, or maybe you're building your business, or your freelance brand, or even helping a client. This formula will guide you on how to create an effective content strategy for any brand. Now, before you start developing your content strategy, it's essential to have a clear understanding of your target audience. Very, very important. Your content strategy should align with your business goals and then be tailored to meet the needs and interests of your target audience. Remember, you are creating content for your target audience. You're not just creating content randomly. So you should have a strategy behind every content you put out on any preferred social media platform. For example, if your goal is to increase your brand awareness, your content should educate and inform your target audience about your products or services. To better understand your target audience, consider conducting a market research. Now, there are many ways to actually research your target audience. It can include, you know, surveying your past customers, right? Sending them surveys to fill out. And then you can go to focus groups like your Facebook group or even your Instagram page. For example, you can go to Instagram pages of your competitors that have large following, right? Just go to the comment section of their post. You will see people dropping comments maybe of their needs or even what they desire, what they want. And that can actually give you an idea of the kind of content you should be creating. Because if those people are dropping their comments and they are talking about their needs, their problems, that means that if you create content around that, you can be able to attract the right people into your community or attract the right people that will be interested in buying your product or services. So by understanding your target audience, you'll be able to create content that appeals to their needs and their interests. And that's actually what will attract them to you. Now, another very important thing you need to do before creating your content strategy is this. Like this is by far an effective strategy that will help you to get results faster. And that is what conducting your content audits. Now, if you don't understand what a content audit is, it's just basically you're going through your past content you've published before. You see what have performed well in the past and see the ones that did not perform well. Then you now find out why those ones that did not perform well actually did not perform well. Why you find out why the ones that performed well actually did well. Like you try to analyze your content, try to analyze your level of engagement and find out why something did well and the other did not do well. That will now guide you on the kind of content you should be putting out because you're going to create more of those ones that are actually doing well. And then you will now stop creating the ones that are not doing well. So this gives you a better understanding of what's been working for you, right? Or what has been working for you and even what needs improvement. Now, when you conduct a content audit, consider factors like engagement, like the level of engagement you've got on that particular content. Relevance, meaning that you should check if that content is actually relevant to the needs or desires of your target audience and even how well the content aligns with your business goals and your target audience this is so so important for example if you wanted to create content to start selling your product then you, most of your content should be about you know, talking about the benefits of your products, how it can help solve the problem of your target audience, and even talking about the mistakes people make while using your products because you want to sell your products. But if your business goal at the moment is just for you to get engagement on your post, your kind of content can be like, choose between this particular A, maybe option A and option B, and then tell me why you actually chose option A. That kind of content can actually bring about engagement. So your business goals actually determines, you know, the content you put out there. And that is why you need to understand your business goals, your target audience, their pain points, their needs. That will not guide you when creating your content strategy. That said, let's begin with the first step to creating an effective content strategy for any business. Now, the first step is identifying your content pillars. Think of content pillars as categories or buckets of content that support your overall brand message and strategy. 
Content pillars are like the foundation of a building, providing structure and support for all the other content that is created around them. Now, when I started my business, I knew that creating content would be an important part of building my brand. But as I started to create content, I quickly realized that something was missing. My content lacked a clear direction and it wasn't resonating with my audience as I hoped. Feeling lost and confused, I decided to take a step back and reflect on the core values that guided my business. After some deep soul searching, I discovered three beliefs that lay at the heart of everything I did in my business and they needed to reflect in my content as well. That helped me to identify the main content pillars that I wanted my content to support and I started to plan all my content around them. The impact was immediate. My content became more focused more authentic and even more powerful i was able to connect with my audience on a deeper level and i started to attract a more loyal following my brand identity became stronger and even more consistent and my content had a more significant impact on my overall business success by providing a clear framework for your content your content pillars will have a profound impact on the success of your business i suggest having no more than two to three content pillars to avoid confusion then create your content around those content pillars i often remind myself of the quote by jb which says having too many content pillars can dilute your message and confuse your audience by limiting your focus you can create a more compelling and memorable brand experience this quote is a reminder to keep things straightforward and clear when creating your content pillars for your brand you want to make it obvious what you do and what you want to be known for very very important right so if you reflect about what you sell if you are selling physical products or what you do if you are offering services and also what you want to be known for what words do you want people to associate with your name or your business when i mention your name or your business name what words do you want to follow that what do you want me to associate with your brand imagine if every time somebody heard your name or your business name they immediately thought of a certain word words that perfectly capture the essence of what you offer and what you stand for for example when you hear of amazon what comes to your mind when you hear of peak what comes to your mind when you hear of jeff bezos what comes to your mind when you hear of walmart what comes to your mind so you need to ask yourself what are the perfect words that capture the essence of what you offer what would those words be for you? For me, that might be Facebook ads experts, that might be social media marketing, that might be content creation, that might be sales and marketing, right? Those are kind of my main area of focus. But even within those areas, it's important you niche down even further because the real magic happens when you dive even deeper and narrow down your focus. As a multi-passionate person, I love talking about a variety of topics, but limiting yourself to two to three key areas ensures that your audience knows what you are talking about. And here is a pro tip. Make sure that those pillars align with your actual products or services or offerings you have. Even if you are selling physical products, make sure that those content pillars align with what you are selling. Very, very important. You don't want to waste your time and effort talking about what does not align with your overall brand or business message. For example, there is no point making website designing as a big part of my brand because I think it's important. I don't offer a website designing course or service. While I might touch on website designing from time to time or bring in experts to talk about it, it's not going to be a main focus of my brand because it's not a source of income for me. Right? So the key is to focus on what you offer, your products or your services and what you're passionate about and let that drive your content strategy. Once you decide on your main theme or your content pillars, then it's time to determine your individual topic ideas. However, before that, you need to choose where you'll be distributing your content. And here is my top tip. Pick one long form content distribution channel, such as, you know, YouTube or blog. And then at least one short form channel such as TikTok or Instagram. Even YouTube even have YouTube shots and you can even leverage that, right? Or you can even go with Facebook or Twitter. Why still focusing on your long form content? Very, very important. This approach will make things a lot easier for you. Trust me. And I speak from experience. The key to success for me has been focusing on a well-planned, detailed, and carefully thought out long-form content piece that drives the rest of my strategy. Now, by starting with a long-form piece, I can easily chop it up and repurpose it for Instagram reels, blog posts, tweets, and a lot more. 
Not only that, but it will also supercharge my SEO strategy by researching the best topics for my YouTube videos. I have a head start on optimizing those same topics for other platforms. Of course, I still need to do platform specific hashtag research. And trust me, with Google owning YouTube, I have a pretty good handle on what works. So how do I come up with my YouTube content ideas? I use websites like Answer the Public to find out what people are searching for. Then I will choose topics from there. For example, if one of my content pillars is Facebook advertising, I'll pop that into answerthepublic.com and then see what suggestions comes up. Then I'll put that into TubeBuddy to craft the most SEO optimized titles specifically for YouTube. And that's how you elevate your content game. I like to also gather ideas by observing what's being discussed on the internet. So I keep tabs on websites like Quora, Reddit, Neraland, Medium, and Twitter to stay up to date on current trends and to see if they align with my content pillars. If I see any trending topics that fit into my content pillars, let's say Facebook advertising, I might create a YouTube video on Facebook advertising while the topic is still being widely discussed, right? I will just simply jump on trend and just create a video to talk about that particular topic. Now, I use video editing app like CapCut and InShot to bring down my long-form content into smaller vertical videos I can distribute on other various channels. When it comes to choosing distribution channels, there are many options to consider. It's crucial to understand your audience and also what you hope to accomplish with your content. And also, you need to understand the platform they hang out on most of the time. That will actually guide you when picking the right platform for your content marketing. For example, many people use social media to generate leads and sales, and that's a great choice, right? But if customer service is actually your major focus, Twitter or Facebook might be the most appropriate for conversations with your customers, though you can still run Facebook ads to generate leads and sales for your business. So basically, the platform you choose will depend on your target audience. For example, TikTok is popular among Gen Z, you know, audience, Facebook groups are popular among mothers in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. And Instagram is popular among trendy millennials, right? So to determine the best platform for your audience, research each platform's demographics and key audiences. A quick Google search can actually help you to do that. Now, ultimately, it's important to understand the purpose of each platform. So if you're targeting professionals and distributing, you know, B2B content, LinkedIn is actually the obvious platform, right? Now, however, you may want to consider using Twitter. The best approach is to research different platforms and determine which channel suits your content the most, whether they be short form or long form content. Now, the distinction between strategy and tactics is something that I've been emphasizing on lately. Strategy refers to broader aspect of understanding your audience. So researching which platforms to be on and also conducting your content research to develop your messaging and your pillars, right? Your content pillars. Now, tactics on the other hand involves the day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week content planning. So such as deciding which format to use for your post, whether you want to use reels or carousels or single posts or even your pictures and all that. These are all under tactics. So basically, tactics are more flexible and can change frequently depending on the factors such as, you know, the algorithm changes or new features and even trends. So when it comes to tactics, you need to decide what works best for you right for your particular kind of business now if you're a freelancer maybe you're a social media manager you will discover that some clients might even prefer video content while others may not right so requiring more creative solutions now the key is to focus on the content formats that best communicates your message and if you're a business owner for example and you discover that Whenever you post video content on your Instagram page or any social media platform you choose, you discover that your audience are actually interacting very well with your video content. That automatically shows you that you should start posting more of video content instead of just carousel or just a static picture. So the key here is to focus on the content formats that best communicates your message. Now to make your content calendar more organized, it's helpful to use different colors or emojis to identify different content pillars. This ensures a good mix of different pillars and also prevent focusing too much on one type of content. Very, very important. Now, when it comes to growing on Instagram, reels are tactics, not an entire strategy. That's why you can still grow on Instagram without even posting reels. Though, I highly recommend using reels to grow on Instagram because Instagram is actually 
favoring people that are you know posting rings they're pushing their rings to more people even to more strangers that don't even know about them so that is why i would still recommend you still use instagram reels as part of your tactics for growing on instagram so you don't have to create reels to grow on the platform in fact i personally don't post reels often and my content strategy from 2021 is still working for me though growth may have been slowed a bit right due to various reasons but then it's important to know your goals for using Instagram and also what you want to achieve from it. Very, very important. For me, the goal is just to have a communication hub with my audience and I can still achieve that without even posting reels. That's why I receive DMs from people even if I don't post consistently on the platform. Now, I do create them just once in a while, but they are largely repurposed from what I post on YouTube. So you see how that kind of works together, right? But then, if you're a business owner and you know that your target audience are on Instagram, then it's very, very important you focus on posting consistently on the platform because remember, Instagram will still reward people that are consistent on the platform. So don't joke with being consistent on platform. Just try to develop your content calendar and your content strategy and work towards that. Make sure you post consistently. In fact, I recommend posting at least once a day for five days, you know, or six days, and then you can take a break on Sundays and all that. But then just try to be consistent on the platform because it will help you in your growth. So if you are struggling with reels or even your client isn't comfortable with them, I suggest trying to create reels without showing your face right you can use canva to do that you can use canva to create reels without showing your face you can use stock videos just use canva to design the reels you know using stock videos and post it on your instagram you can even use code to see if it actually works now another option is repurposing your existing content like taking clips from your youtube videos or your podcast and then using them on reels right so this way you have presence on different platforms like tiktok you know instagram you know different platforms right and your hard work is not going to be a waste now now, to get the best results, it's important to test and measure your results. Very, very important. So you can know what is working for you and what is not working. Write down the numbers to see what is performing well for you. So if you see that reels are working well, you may need to have a difficult conversation with yourself and consider showing your face. And even better, you can consider having somebody on camera. So you can just hire somebody and pay the person to create videos for you, create reels for you, and then you post it on your Instagram page. The key is just to come up with a plan that works for you. It's as simple as that. Finally, let me know which distribution channel you are focusing on and what your content pillars are. Just drop it in the comment section. And don't forget to click on the video on the screen right now to watch the next video. If you actually found this video useful. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Then enable your notifications so you don't miss out on any video I post on this channel. See you next time. Bye.